Hi everyone. Okay, so if you need to grab your paper out, grab your note paper out, pause the video, write these down if you didn't from our intro, and be sure to write your notes in bullet point because I'm gonna start. All right, so go ahead and pause right now because I'm about to move the camera. And three, two, one. Now you guys can see my cute cat. This is my only pet. He's so cute. All right. So we are reading Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Hmm, what could a note be with, with what I just said? Hmm, so you could put bullet point, author, A-U-T-H-O-R, Laura Ingalls Wilder. All right, you can pause the video if you need to to spell her name. All right, so that's the kind of notes I'm wanting. All right, so let's go ahead and start. Chapter one, Little House in the Big Woods. Once upon a time, 60 years ago, mm, this book was written in 1932. That means in 1872. Oh, in 1872 is when she's writing this. All right, there's her family. I'll come over here and read. Uh, 60 years ago, a little girl lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little gray house made of logs. Get a little closer, there you go. The great dark trees of the big woods stood all around the house and beyond them were other trees and beyond them were more trees as far as a man could go to the north in a day, or a week, or a whole month. There was nothing but woods. There were no houses. There were no roads. There were no people. There were only trees, and the wild animals who had their homes among them. Wolves lived in the big woods, and bears, and huge wild cats, muskrats, and mink and otter lived by the streams. Foxes had dens in the hills and deer roamed everywhere. To the east of the little log house and to the west, there were miles upon miles of trees and only a few little houses scattered far apart in the edge of the big woods. So far as the little girl could see, there was only the one little house where she lived with her father and mother her sister Mary, and baby sister Carrie. Mmm, those sounded like main characters. A wagon track ran before the house, turning and twisting out of sight in the woods where the wild animals lived. But the little girl did not know where it went, nor what might be at the end of it. The little girl was named Laura, and she called her father Pa, and her mother, Ma. In those days, in that place, children did not say father and mother, nor mama and papa, as they do now. At night, when Laura lay awake in the trundle bed, she listened and could not hear anything at all but the sounds of the trees whispering together. Sometimes, far away in the night, a wolf howled. Then he came nearer and howled again. It was a scary sound. Laura knew that wolves would eat little girls, but she was safe inside the solid log walls. Her father's gun hung over the door, and good old Jack, the brindle bulldog, lay on guard before it. Her father would say, Go to sleep, Laura. Jack won't let the wolves in. So Laura snuggled under the covers of the trundle bed, close behind Mary, and went to sleep. One night, her father picked her up out of bed and carried her to the window so that she might see the wolves. There were two of them sitting in front of the house. They looked like shaggy dogs. They pointed their noses at the big bright moon and howled. Jack paced up and down before the door, growling. The hair stood up along his back and he showed his sharp, fierce teeth to the wolves. They howled, 
but they could not get in. The house was a comfortable house. Upstairs there was a large attic, pleasant to play in when the rain drummed on the roof. Downstairs was the small bedroom and the big room. The bedroom had a window that closed with a wooden shutter. The big room had two windows with glass in the panes and it had two doors, a front door and a back door. All around the house was a crooked rail fence to keep the bears and deer away. Man, they're giving us a lot of setting notes, aren't they? Hmm, lots of setting means where the story's taking place. In the yard in front of the house were two beautiful big oak trees. Every morning, as soon as she was awake, Laura ran to look out the window. And one morning, she saw in each of the big trees a dead deer hanging from a branch. <sighs> Paul had shot the deer the day before, and Laura had been asleep when he brought them home at night and hung them high in the tree so that wolves could not get to the meat. That day, Pa and Ma and Laura and Mary had fresh venison for dinner. It was so good that Laura wished they could eat it all. But most of the meat must be salted and smoked and packed away to be eaten in winter, for winter was coming. The day was, days were shorter, and frost crawled up the window panes at night. Soon the snow would come. Then the log house would be almost buried in snowdrifts, and the lakes and streams would freeze. In the bitter cold weather, Pa could not be sure of finding any wild game to shoot for meat. The bears would be hidden away in their dens, where they slept soundly all winter. The squirrels would be curled in their nests in hollow trees, and their furry tails wrapped snugly around their noses. The deer and the rabbits would be shy and swift. Even if Pa could get a deer, it would be poor and thin, not fat and plump as the deer are in fall. Pa might hunt alone all day in the bitter cold, in the big woods covered with snow, and come home at night with nothing for Ma, Ma and Mary and Laura to eat. So as much food as possible must be stored away in the little house before winter came. Pa skinned the deer carefully and salted the st and stretched the hides, for he would make soft leather, leather of them. Then he cut up the meat and sprinkled salt all over the pieces as he laid them on a board. Standing on end in the yard was a tall length cut from the trunk of a big hollow tree. Pa had driven nails inside as far as he could reach from each end. Then he stood it up, put a little roof over the top, and cut a little door on one side near the bottom. Let me show you a picture. So there's our hollow tree. He is making a smoker. Pretty cool. All right, let's see here. On the piece that he cut out, he fastened leather hinges. Then he fitted in it, it into place. And that was the little door with the bark still on it. After the deer meat had been salted several days, Pa cut a hole near the end of each piece, put a string through it. Laura watched him do this, and then she watched him hang the meat on the nails inside the hollow log. He reached up through the little door and hung the meat on the nails as far up as he could reach. Then he put a ladder against the log, climbed up to the top, moved the roof to one side, and reached down inside to hang the meat on the nails. Then, Pa put the roof back on, climbed down the ladder, and said to Laura, run over to the chopping block and fetch me some of those green hickory chips, new clean white ones. So Laura ran to the block where Pa chopped wood and filled her apron with a fresh sweet smelling chips. Just inside the little door in the hollow log, Pa built a fire of tiny bits of bark and moss, and he laid some of the chips on it very carefully. Instead of burning quickly, the green hickory chips smoldered and filled the hollow log with thick, choking smoke. Pa shut the door. All right. Pa shut the door 
and the little smoke squeezed through the crack around it, and a little smoke came out through the roof, but most of it was shut in with the meat. There's nothing better than good hickory smoke, Pa said. That will be good venison. That will keep anywhere in any weather. Then he took his gun, and slinging his axe on his shoulder, he went away to clearing, to the clearing to cut down some more trees. Laura and Ma watched the fire for several days. When smoke stopped coming through the cracks, Laura would bring more hickory chips, and Ma would put them on the fire under the meat. All the time, there was little smell, the little smell of smoke in the yard. And when the door was opened, a thick, smoky, meaty smell came out. At last, Pa said the venison had smoked long enough. Then they let the fire go out, and Pa took all the strips and pieces of meat out of the hollow tree. Ma wrapped each piece neatly in paper and hung them in the attic, where they would keep safe and dry. All right, so what have we talked about? We've already, Pa's already gone hunting. He built a smoker out of an old, like, dead tree. That's pretty cool. It's pretty amazing, huh? Now we can just go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy us a smoker. No, they went and they made one out of an old tree. Super cool. All right, so I hope you guys got five notes or four. I'll let you slip with four. Four to five notes, all right, on what we just read. And I will go ahead and see you tomorrow for tomorrow's reading, okay? All right. Any questions? Is there anything I'm missing? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. So uh, don't forget about your notes. You don't have to draw your picture until tomorrow because we haven't finished the chapter. All right. Okay. 